Hello, this is Bill with a weather and climate briefing. We will first take a look at the month of September, then we will give an outlook for October. Here are daily departure from normal temperatures for the month of September at the Fargo Hector Airport. The red bars represent days that were warmer than normal, and the blue bars represent days then that were colder than average. Most of the first half of September was pretty mild. Then the second half of September turned colder. This is another way to look at the September daily temperature data from the Fargo Airport. Daily highs are shown at the top of the red bars and daily lows are shown at the bottom of the blue bars. Now the solid red and blue lines show the normal highs and lows and the dotted red and blue lines will show the record high and low temperatures. The highest August temperature at the Fargo Airport was 94 degrees and that occurred on the 16th. This set a new record high for the date. Meanwhile, the coldest September temperature at Fargo was 28, rather chilly, and this occurred on the 28th. This was not quite a record low, though. Does it seem like it's too early for this cold snap? Well, here's the freeze history at Fargo for the past five years. The values on the left show the last date of freezing temperatures in the spring, while the values on the right show the first freezing readings that fall. This is basically what composes your growing season. And yes, this is the shortest growing season in the past five years. This is also causing the fall colors to come out just a little bit early. Coincidentally, the longest growing season was, yes, last year. Here are the warmest September temperatures for selected cities across the area. Devil's Lake and Bidette did not reach 90 degrees in September. Now let's take a look at the coldest September temperatures for the same five cities. On the cold morning of the 28th, a sun dog was visible in Grand Forks, and that certainly is quite early in the season for that to occur. Instead of daily temperature values, let's look at how September turned out in its entirety. Basically, all these sites were pretty close to normal, except Devil's Lake, which you can see, was a little bit colder. Here are the September precipitation totals for those same cities. Again, there was a lot of variability, as is common during the warm season. Devil's Lake, again, had the lowest precipitation total. This chart shows the number of severe weather warnings issued each day in September. Several severe thunderstorm warnings were issued, which are denoted by the orange bars. If you remember most, the first half of the month was warm. This is when the warnings were issued. Then once the month turned cold, and it's just about the second half of September, you notice that there were no severe weather warnings issued. Now let's change focus and look ahead into the new month of October. During October, normal highs and lows continue to decrease, as well as the amount of normal precipitation. In terms of length of day, we will also lose another hour and one half of day length during the month of October. For those of us who want more warm weather, which includes me, what chances do you, we have of that happening? Well, this chart shows the number of 90 degree or higher temperatures that have occurred in the last five Octobers, and you could see pretty rare. Few spots just had one day. Well, how about if we settle for 80 degrees or warmer? Still, you can see not very many. 
And okay, finally, we'll go all the way down to 70 degrees or warmer. Well, a little bit better. There have been a fair number of these, especially at the Fargo site. Turning our attention to the dreaded white stuff. All right, one or two people might actually want this, but snowfall data is a little more sparse in our area. However, for both Fargo and Grand Forks, the average first trace of snowfall has occurred in late October. During the past five years, the first trace has occurred as early as October 3rd and as late as the 22nd day of November. Are you hoping for heavier snow? Well, the first inch or more of snowfall has been coming in late November or early December. However, it has come as early as November 1st and as late as February 10th. With cooler temperatures comes a decreasing probability for severe weather. Only two tornado and one severe thunderstorm warnings have been issued in the last five Octobers. Now looking nationally, this is the Climate Prediction Center's October temperature outlook. For us golfers now, in our area, there is a higher probability for below normal temperatures. Not such a good thing as we are trying to wrap up the season. This is the Climate Prediction Center's precipitation outlook for October. Again, for our area, there is a higher probability for above normal precipitation. Will that translate into the possibility of an earlier or heavier snowfall during this month? We'll have to wait and see. Here is our latest photo of the month contest winner. It shows a blooming sunflower near Sallow, Minnesota. This is the courtesy of Heather Morey. That continues this weather and climate briefing. Stay tuned for further reports and thank you very much for listening.